All right, so yes, we open sourced uh, Vulkan uh, just a couple days ago, and how that process went is I was boarding the plane to Berlin, and I pushed the make public button, and then I got on an airplane that had zero internet for 11 hours. And so I was waiting anxiously when I landed to figure out what the reaction was. And I found this tweet. First thought, why, for God's sake, would you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> fork? So I want to go into what it means um, people talking about as a fork and API compatible. Um, first off, API compatible does not mean a replacement for Prometheus. We want some different attributes, and we want to be as close to the Prometheus uh, operations of what it feels like to query and interact with Prometheus as possible, and that we don't intend to solve the same problems in the same way, but utilize the same e ecosystem. Um, and so one of the weird ways we've leveraged that is we use Prometheus as a library, um, and the Prometheus itself was not meant to be a user library. It was meant to build a binary that you actually run, but we're using it in our binary that we build to run. Um, but that helps us keep in sync by using that upstream as an actual library instead of like forking it and making significant changes to the core of the code. Um, and so we want to keep the contributions to PromQL and how the engine works right in Prometheus in one place. And as another side effect, the how you configure Vulkan is with a scrape job, which is using the exact same code that Prometheus uses for configuring your scrape jobs. Um, so maybe we need a better tagline for our project because it says API compatible uh, alternative. That might be misleading. Um, so what our vision is, is we want to provide different attributes. And what uh, I just barely learned this term, horizontal monitoring today, of this concept that you can have multiple things scraping the same exporters that you have for different purposes. And you can have Prometheus in parallel, in line with Vulkan. So why build Vulkan? Um, Long-term storage, sample durability, and high cardinality metrics. Um, those were kind of the, the buzzwords around it. So OK, why, why build Vulkan, for reals? Um, so we have some use cases. We want trending over months of our power usage in our data centers. Um, and we want to be able to aggregate that by rack, by PDU type, um, by data center. And um, we want a better story about the numbers we're summing up for SLA numbers that we report to ourselves and to customers. And a store that if we were to lose a Prometheus node, it would be a difficult job to try to like, make sure we have enough data backfilled. Yeah. Uh, for a 30-day window to provide that monitoring. So we want to be able to lose nodes that are storing the data with Cassandra and have a replication factor that allows us to have a high durability of those metrics. Um, and high cardinality, one thing that we're trying to use right now is like SSD performance. And being able to sum that by the model number, but also once there's some bad actors, be able to filter down into like the actual serial number that is performing and from our uh, Prometheus uh, endpoint query, like who is, what hard drives are performing poorly, and go right to the source. All right, okay, but why? But this time, stop lying to me. I like PromQL. Like, we could have solved those other is issues without building an entirely weird, crazy fork of uh, Prometheus. Um, but we really like PromQL. And what we were doing is we did have Prometheus, and we were doing ETL jobs, custom jobs out of Prometheus data into a SQL database. And then we can have that reporting, we have our durability guarantees and our backups. But now we're maintaining ETL jobs. And we're also training people to query Prometheus. And we're also training people to query like the SQL layer over here for this other data. But it's really all the same source. So can we utilize the same source data and store it in a different way and have the same language to get to it? Um, and it, like uh, Tom was saying with uh, their project in Frankenstein, we, we built it and it was surprisingly performant, um, putting it onto a database and taking it away from the Prometheus model of being in memory. Um, so alternative is not a replacement. Um, Vulkan is much more complex to run. All of our workers in Vulkan are stateless, but you require Cassandra, you require Kafka, you require Elasticsearch, and because you require Kafka, you require Zookeeper. So there's four operationally expensive things to run in order to have the data storage layer behind Vulkan. Um, but you get to keep your query language. So you've trained on Prometheus, and now you know how to use Vulkan. Um, and finally, on the name, Vulkan is the Roman god of fire, metalworking, and of the forge. Raised in the ocean, digital ocean, uh, Vulcan was charged with crafting the tools and weaponry to be used by the gods of Olympus. So thank you, Prometheus, for giving us the fire in the first place. Thank you.